In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of pick technique. Now, first of all, you should know that a pick is also called a plectrum. So if you've ever heard that term before, a plectrum instrument, P-L-E-C-T-R-U-M, that means anything that's played with a pick, plectrum. We're going to call it a pick. All right, so a few things about the pick first. They are this basically a triangle shaped uh, implement that you use to strike the strings, of course. And there are different thicknesses or gauges. There is the heavy gauge, which it's really tough to bend. I'm pushing pretty hard on it. That's going to have the loudest, darkest sound. Then you've got medium gauge, which I can bend, but it's not super flexible. And this is going to have a different sound, a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter sound because it's giving more against the strings, less resistance against the strings. And then of course, at the other end of the extreme from heavy is a thin. And now this one is, you can basically just bend it in half. It's very... Uh, very thin and you can see it's bending as I strike the strings. So if I were to strum, let's say a G chord, with this thin pick you'll hear a lot of that sound, that dragging sound across the strings. If I go to the medium, you're going to hear less of that and it's going to be louder. If I go to the heavy or thick, heavy gauge pick, you'll hear the, li the least amount of drag and it's going to be loudest and darkest sounding. So depending on what your preference is, that's going to help you decide which pick you want to use. Okay, all of them are fine. You should get a variety pack so that you can experiment with them. I'm going to use a heavy pick because I like this lately. I used to use a medium pick only, but lately I've been liking the heavy gauge pick. So here we go. Okay, you're going to hold it. The, the triangle point of the pick is basically the part that's going to strike the strings. Now we're going to talk about single string plucking first, as opposed to strumming, which is a little bit different in terms of how you hold the pick. Basically, for picking, you're going to be holding the pick between the thumb and index. This is the standard way of doing it. You could hold it with two fingers. Some people hold it with um, thumb and middle finger. I like thumb and index. That's probably the most common way. And you're going to let it stick out from your thumb about that much. So maybe around a quarter inch, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. It depends on what you're comfortable with. And that point of the pick is going to be what's striking the string. Okay, we have two choices with a pick when we're plucking. We can either pluck down toward the ground or up. So we refer to those as down up. Generally, we start with a down stroke when we are playing. And uh, for something like eighth notes, we would alternate down, up, down, up, or 16th notes, down, up, down, up. So for speed, you want that alternation in the same way that when we do finger st style, we need to alternate between at least two fingers for that speed, all right? Okay, this is going to seem strange, but this is actually the proper way to do it. When you are, uh, because it's going to give you more control, when you are single note picking with the pick, instead of having your wrist elevated from the guitar, you're actually going to rest the inside of your wrist on the bridge here, okay? And pivot from there. That helps you control these small movements. So that's actually good technique. Um, I'm just lightly resting there, and you'll see people do this on acoustic guitar and electric guitar. Uh, we don't, again, we don't want to plant the pinky because that does create tension as I move up this way and I've got this finger locked. I can feel that tension in my hand. So use this as your touch point and just pivot from there. I recommend keeping that pinky out of the way. So first exercise that we'll do for you to get used to this, you're going to rest your inside of your wrist there, and you're going to pluck down, up, down, up. Then
then we go to the fifth string. This is just like what we did with index middle on the open strings. Okay, let's do that again. So notice that as I move from the sixth string toward the first string, I am not keeping my wrist uh, locked here and trying to reach down there. I'm moving all the way across this saddle. So as I move toward the first string, I'm sliding down so that I can reach it easier, uh, easier, more easily uh, than if I were to keep it up here and try to bend down there. That's gonna create tension in the wrist there. So move along this uh, bridge as you move your way across the strings. All right, here we go again. I'll count in four. This time we're going to do just like we did with the chromatic exercise open strings before we added the left hand. And that is to do sixth string all the way up to the first string. Then we'll do first again and then second. Now remember, we want to alternate down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, you want to keep this movement as small as possible because that's going to give you more control. And remember, by pivoting on the wrist here, that's going to control that small movement. Okay, so nice and slow to start. Hold that pick. The more you choke up on the pick, so the less is sticking out, the more control you'll have because you're going to be closer to the strings. Whereas if you hold it way back here with a lot of it sticking out, you're going to be hitting extra strings that you don't want to hit. So choking up uh, gives you more control. Just like if you've ever played softball or baseball, you know, they say choke up on the bat. That gives you a little more control of your swing. Okay. Same idea with the pick. Here we go. So I'm going to rest my wrist gently on the bridge and I'll count in one, two, Three, four, down, up, down, up, fifth string, down, up, down, up, fourth, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, first string. Now, first again, then second, down, up, down. Let's do that a little faster. One, two, three, four. That's an exercise you should practice during the week to get comfortable with it. I recommend a few minutes a day. Remember, try not to anchor that pinky. Try to just keep it curved up and have your touch point be the bridge here just gently. That's going to be the part that gives you control. Okay. And also um, do it with the metronome. When you're comfortable with it, see if you can do it without looking at your hand and just do it by feel. Of course, that's what we want to memorize.